All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about life, art, and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and uh, for those of you on Instagram Live, go on to YouTube if you want to interact and do this art challenge. Okay, so what is happening here? Let's start from the beginning. Oh my God. You saw some stuff. You saw some stuff. Okay, if you have any questions, you could go to slido.com, hashtag ChewStream, and uh, ask all your questions there. So what's today? Today is special. Today is an illustration challenge with me, your host. Uh, and the cool thing is, is that I did the challenge with you. Okay, so what is this challenge? You have 90 minutes to finish an illustration based on this photo. Link is provided in the details of this video. Now I want to give a big shout out to Slide or not Slido.com. Slido is cool too um, because that's where you can ask questions. And uh, also in the details of this YouTube video, you can find Discord and then you can ask questions live. How fun is that? Uh, you could call in like a call center, like one of those deals. Um, Okay, so you can download the image. I was going to say you could download the image on um, unsplash.com. That's a copyright-free site where you can feel free to use those photos for commercial use or whatever you like. So big shouts out to them. Uh, and let's get started. Okay, so if you went to the details in the YouTube video, you can find the link to this uh, reference image that we're going to be painting here. And let's take a look at what this reference image is. The reference image looks like this. Now, what, what was I doing? I was doing actually, I've painted this one photo probably at least seven or eight times. Um, and for you on Instagram, come over to YouTube, come on to Discord, chat with me live. It'll be fun. Or you could ask questions on Instagram. I'll try to answer as many as I can. But um, yeah, I painted this photo a whole bunch of times. Last time when you guys were doing that artist workout with me, I was talking about, well, how do I really train? How do I really study? Um, and the differences between how I study and how I find most people study. Most people will study something by painting it once and then never painting it again, right? But for me, what did I do? I ended up painting this thing once. And this one is I just I copied the overall silhouette of this image, right? So it's an exact copy. And then within that silhouette, I started to paint in. I only gave myself an hour to do it. And then I painted it just, just trying to draw it, just trying to paint it again within an hour. But this time, you know, and, and this is the second attempt. So you can see the funny changes. Now, these are not the best profiles and they're not meant to be. These are learning. Um, opportunities for me to really study an image uh, you know so the first time I had a silhouette to paint from second time I didn't have a silhouette but I had to finish it within an hour okay third time same thing you know you try it twice and it's better the second time uh, then you then I painted it again right still not awesome but still just the whole entire purpose is I'm exploring questions that I have about this image, ideas that I might have. Then I painted it, the reverse image, using the exact silhouette, right? An hour to do this as well, except this time I painted it in reverse. Then I painted it in reverse mirror image one hour again. Each one of these, I'm attempting to finish them in an hour. And the last one, I painted it back to the normal um the normal side, right? Not doing the mirror image, but doing something a lot more creative. And this is like my eighth time right now. Okay, so 
that's why I kind of wanted to show you this eighth time is going to be really fun. I didn't have to use the reference at all. That's what I was kind of getting at. The eighth time, I didn't have to use the reference at all. This is straight out of my head. And being able to do this out of my head now, because you guys know, I don't really paint girls at all. You know, it's probably a handful of women that I've drawn in the last five years. Something like that. Um, but using this technique, using this method of studying, I was able to paint this illustration from my head. Um, I want to show you this not because, look at me, look at what I could do, but it's more like, hey, look at us. Look at what we can all do. And you could go ahead and you could do the same exercises as well and then try this the last time where there's no reference at all. I'll put up the reference just so people can see uh, what I studied from all those days. Okay. So, big shouts out to uh, Rizk something from Indonesia. I see he's from Indonesia on Instagram here. And uh, Planet Jump from London, and who knows where everybody else is from. Cologne, got Cologne in here, France. All right. So, you only have 90 minutes front to end to finish this illustration. Seven minutes have passed. You could also see uh, that I drew a line there. That line is uh, kind of to help me to remember that this head is on, the, on a tilt. You know, this person is not looking, this person is looking forward, but their head is slightly tilted um, or tilted upwards. So I want to make sure to keep that in there because a lot of times, I don't know about you, but when I start to paint, I tend to straighten things out. Okay. And I can see that there's a whole bunch of people on Discord. Okay, so if you're on Discord and you want to ask me a question, first uh, mute YouTube and then ask me the question, okay? Or else you're gonna hear yourself twice and everybody's gonna hear yourself twice. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna unmute Discord. And now uh, Discord is live. If you wanna ask a question, like I said, mute your YouTube so that you don't have this reverb and you hear the voice twice. All right, and while we're doing that, we also have on here, because people like to ask questions from everywhere. <laughs> we also have on here um, Slido questions. And my friends, my people that I know and love, you know, it would be great to hear your wonderful voices during this crazy time. Uh, hop on on Discord and uh, chat with me. Even if you don't have a question, you could just, you know, whatever. All right. So first one is... Oh, I hear a I hear a voice. I hear a voice. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Kostas from Greece. I joined the last time. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, big shout out to Mitchell Bernal. I just saw my buddy on on the chat on uh, YouTube there. So, do you have a question? I'm just hanging around. Oh, just hanging around. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, how how are things over? In, you said you're from Greece? Yeah. How are things over there? Are they as crazy as uh, everywhere else? Uh, it's okay for a moment, but still people are going outside. Oh. oh, okay. Well, yeah, you know, nowadays I have like indoor pants and outdoor pants. That's how crazy I've gotten. <laughs> So when I come home, I, I take off my pants. I wear my indoor pants. Anyways, you probably didn't need to know that. But it's great to have you call in and, uh, yeah, hang out. If you're not saying anything, then just make sure to mute your mic. I also see on here Raymond on here. Hey, Raymond. No? Okay. Raymond is busy. 
So I'm going to go to a Slido question. Do you have any strategies for days when you're feeling out of whack, like your brain is not there? Exercise, that's always a good one. If it's really about motivation, it's, it's really about understanding that decisions can be made like this. Have you ever made a decision where you just finally, you just decided, hey, no more, I'm not going to do this anymore, boom, and then you switched, right? Um, we can all do this. We can all do this. You just got to turn off that reasoning part of your brain sometimes because sometimes I find that, that, that voice, that reasoning voice starts to reason why you should keep playing video games, why you should keep uh, st you know, w binge watching whatever it is that you're binge watching. You know, you come up with a good idea, like, you know what, it would be great to study some ink paintings or something like that. Go and freaking do it. Turn off that reasoning part of your brain. You came up with a good decision already. You don't need any reasons. Let's go do it and just, you know, start to go in those motions to get those things done. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I do. Uh, the other thing is, if you are feeling out of whack, um, also it's a great thing to schedule, to schedule these things. I was doing these studies every day, every morning. The first thing I do in the morning is I spend, you know, an hour and study the same photograph over and over again. Why? Because I'm not just trying to study and see how it is. I want to absorb. I want to absorb the knowledge that is in this photograph. And if, if you think that you are able to absorb all the knowledge from this one study, one time, just by painting it once, most likely, most likely you're kidding yourself. Or... You are absolutely incredible and you are, you know, a gift to this earth for your art abilities. There's so many things that I really appreciated from studying this photo. I really appreciated how dark skin is represented. I was saying this last time. There are so many of us all over the world with dark skin and you know, we're totally not represented. Those people are not represented nearly enough. You know, there's so many of them out there. I want to learn how to paint all sorts of different kinds of people, not just uh, young people, uh, beautiful, you know, Instagram-looking model people or whatever. I want to learn how to paint uh, crazy-looking characters. I want to learn how to paint everything. The other thing I really appreciated about this photo that I found very challenging was the cheeks. The cheeks feel kind of plump, yet there's kind of like definition of the cheekbone and stuff like that. That was really weird for me. I found that that was really odd. The other thing I really that I loved from this photograph, uh, the study, if you squint your eyes and you look at the ear, you can see that the ear kind of creates a star shape. And a lot of times you, you look for these abstract things to help you remember how to paint it. You know, so that was something else I got from this. Um, another thing that I got was, let's see here. The eyes. You know what? I love the whole entire lighting of this because it's not the usual lighting. It's not like lighting coming from uh, up above downwards all the time. The top area of this person's eye is lit up. The bottom of the nose is lit up. The lips, the upper lip is lit up. The top of the nose has shadow. The top of the lip area, the mouth area has shadow. Those are all very interesting to me. You know, you could also, if you kind of made a line um, from the neck all the way up to 
almost the top of the head, you can almost see like the lighting has created a straight line. And it's made an almost a 90 degree angle uh, line going to the right of the image, creating an almost a, an upside down L shape, you know, of light. I thought that was really fascinating too. And those are all things that I want to take from this study as I painted it over and over again and then painted my own without using any reference, right? To really absorb that information. And as you're painting this, try to think in that same way where you're not just gonna copy everything. You're gonna try to guess at things. You're gonna try to make sense of things and, um, and absorb that knowledge, own that knowledge, you know? slowly and surely and actually quite quickly just from this one photo study that I've been doing I've gained a good amount of knowledge uh, and so that's why I'm doing this image again I took off the last one because I didn't really like the last stream but um, what I'm thinking is if you guys are interested let me know but what I'm thinking is that I would build a course where it's not really a course, but more like studies like this, warm-ups. How do I study? How do I learn? Because it's one thing to teach lessons. It's another thing to learn the lessons, how to learn them effectively. And then you're doing the studies with me. That's what I was kind of thinking. I actually recorded those other studies that I just showed you, um, just in case. All right. So I see a whole bunch of people on Discord. If anybody wants to uh, ask me a question on Discord, just uh, just yell it out. Just say hi. Any more questions on Discord? Okay. While we go to, while we wait for that, we can go to Fico or Vico, sorry. What do you think are the benefits of drawing and painting from the same picture so many times? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, great question. I think I explained that already. It's really to absorb new knowledge, right? And it's, it's difficult to do that just from one time. Um, I always found that studying a painting one time or a photograph or whatever one time is pretty much like taking one little bite out of a beautiful big cake and throwing the rest out. You know, because that's how much you've probably absorbed. Um, great question. Anonymous. I feel like what I do is not mine and it's just a copy of someone else. Any advice? Learn from more people. That one's so, it's such a simple answer. You know, it takes a lot of effort, but it's a simple answer. Study from more people, study from more things, learn from more stuff. Because when you start learning, think about this, if you have more information, then you'll, you'll have more choices. So how are you gonna represent this woman uh, here in the study? Well, if you had like, only one way to paint a woman, then perhaps, you see right here? I'm doing the star thing in the ear, by the way. Um, it's like a short form for the symbol inside the ear. I thought that was really fascinating. But if you only had one way to paint a ear, then you're for sure gonna feel, and if you learned it from somebody else, you're for sure gonna feel like you're a copy of somebody else. But if you learn seven, eight, 10, 12 different ways of how to paint an ear, all of a sudden you look at somebody's ear or you're wanting to paint an ear, then you have all these choices to go through and then you could pick the right one and then just do that one. You know, and being able to hand pick all of these different techniques, all these, these different styles, all of these different uh, observations that you've collected over the years, all of that together creates something that is all your own, 
and represents you 100%. You've had choices. You selected from a bunch of different choices the, the choices that you felt uh, you liked the most, which means that that thing that you just painted represents you so much more in a style all its own. All right. That's a good question, too. Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, ask a question on Discord, just yell them out. Just let me know. Okay, actually, I'm going to turn on my Instagram again since I'm answering all these questions. Okay, so next question here. Next question is a hardware question. Any tips on calibrating monitor settings? I'm always scared that the colors I think I'm seeing are different to what others will see. Yeah, I've encountered that a bunch of times where um, maybe the print comes back and it's darker than what I originally painted, stuff like that. Um, how I dealt with it is pretty simple. I'll print it out. I'll print out whatever I, I want to check. And after I print it out, I'll take a look at it. I'll compare it to the monitor and see if it's the right colors. Because unfortunately, even if you have your monitor calibrated, it doesn't mean that your employer has their monitor calibrated, right? How would you know? All right. Next question on here, uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, there's all sorts of ways to ask questions today. Oh, we have a question um, on Discord. Pixie, Pixie Jen. Hey. Hey. Oh, finally, okay. Um, no, it's, just, it's been a long time. Actually, I took your first class, Bobby. It's been years. You took my first class? What's your name? I did, Jennifer Bailey. It has been oh. years. We met at Comic-Con a million years ago, and wow. I, like, took your first class. But I quit. I quit art, like, years ago. Like, it's literally been over 10 years. You quit um, art? Oh, wow. I did. But um, I saw your email. I still, have, I still get your emails. Yay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've been getting them for years and, uh, it's all inspiring and you like, you've grown so huge since then. It's fantastic. All your movies and your show. I've watched all of it. Oh, um, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, anyway, um, so yeah, you just, you know, the quarantine and stuff. And I was like, why not try to sit back with my tablet again? Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, if you are feeling a little rusty. Um, oh, I am. What I would suggest, Jen, is to take that reference image and just select the character, the person, and, you know, fill it in so you have a nice silhouette to start off with. Then you don't have to um, take too much time trying to draw it out. And I then, just traced, to be perfectly yeah, honest, because yeah. I, I'm not, I don't even sweat. That's great. The, trying to draw I really love coloring so I, I learned that at least in the time that I did uh practice art so yeah I don't I don't sweat worrying about the drawing it's all good that's fantastic hey it's great to hear from you yeah I'm really I'm really uh it's been fun following your your adventures over the past few years <laughs> yeah seriously it's it's amazing like um what time will do sometimes when you just keep picking at one goal or like a couple goals you know yeah, yeah. it's great anyway so this was such a sweet idea i love it and i just think everything's going so well oh well thank you so much for calling in i feel so much less alone <laughs> <laughs> awesome well does anybody else have a question i see uh somebody else on on discord right now um, can I just ask a question? Or? Yeah, sure. Oh, ah, cool. Hi, uh, my name is Nadia. I'm from Germany. Um, and I have this feeling like I know like a lot of stuff in all different kinds of areas, like web design or like logo design and then art and illustration and animation. But I feel like there's nothing I, I can do really well like that. 
Pokemon Eevee that just knows everything a little bit and nothing really well until it like develops. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you maybe like know a way how I could get past this? Because I know that I really love illustration and animation, but like for my job right now where I can't quit until like one and a half more years, I have to do like a lot of 3D stuff and social media and a lot of things that don't quite allow me to pursue what I really love and it's like really hard to focus on what's important and what I does it make sense <laughs> yeah uh been there been there life has a way of kind of designing designing your life especially out of school designing in a way where it puts you almost like on a treadmill you're doing the same thing every day you can't get off and then you buy stuff and then you got to pay it every month and then you got to keep that job and all this stuff you know and that's kind of like for me that was life's test you know so like how badly do you want it what are you going to do when you are on the bus when you get home whatever it might be like all the time that you have are you using it um as wisely as you can because right now you are on one path and you want to get on to another path, you know, uh, and making that transition is the difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think like these, all these other things that I'm learning, do you think it's, it's good to know like stuff out of all of kinds of different areas? Or do you yeah. think it's better if you just know like that one thing and you're good at that? Both, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because like, if you know a lot of things, that's really great. And guaranteed, they will drip into your career in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the other thing is, I find that there's this very common thing where people will try stuff, not to the point where they're good at it, before deciding if they like it or not. Mm -hmm. And I find like being good at something makes you like something so much more. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah so I think I know what you mean. For me, like, I didn't... I just liked art before. I didn't know I wanted to be in animation. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I get into animation. It's like, wow, it's not just animation. There's storyboarding, layouts, life drawing, all this stuff. What do I know? What What do I like? I don't know. I don't know any of them enough. So then I was like, okay, well... I'm going to start off with one of them. I just chose one, you know, and it was layouts. So I really got into drawing environments. Until I was good at it, I got a, you know, not so hot job doing environments. And I was like, yeah, I've gotten to a point where I feel like I can be employed. Do I like it now? No, I don't like it. And then I went on to something else. But then, of course, being able to draw environments have definitely helped um, accentuate the, the concepts that I'll do because there's, you know, the thing is in an environment almost every time, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just a simple thing like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say if you got to keep your job, keep your job, especially nowadays. Right now it's like everybody's having trouble uh, keeping their jobs because of yeah. this whole situation. Um so yeah, it's like a mix of like education and work. It's like this kind of concept that Germany has where you go to school for two days and the other three oh. days you go to work um, and they can't fire you until the end of these three years you're in there. And you also can't quit for these th or it's hard to quit for these three years. So I'm oh. kind of bound to it. So I have to learn what they tell me to learn right now. Well, kind of. the other thing is, and I don't know what you're um what your situation is, but a lot of times uh, somebody tells you to do one thing. You do that thing, okay, great, you do it, you don't really like it, you like this other thing, and you put your heart and soul into that other thing, and then finally when you're good at it, you tell the person, hey, look, I don't want to do that, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. it, this has happened to me before with employees and such, and I'll be like, oh, shoot, yeah. That makes sense. Why don't you do that other thing? You know, and you know what I mean? Like, 
-hmm. sometimes it takes us to put that f f that uh, foot forward first, and then people will get it, and then people will let you do what you're really passionate about. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I hope it helps. Yeah, it helps. Thanks. Have a great time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So why don't we go on to Hassan? Hassan is asking from Slido. Hi, Bobby. I've been following you since Sketchaholic days. Can you give me some technical tips to convert drawings into um, into paintings? What are the more important steps? Uh, well, there's a lot, Hassan. There's a lot. Uh, you can see the whole entire process throughout this this video. That's for sure. Uh, so you could definitely play this video again, watch it, and kind of follow along. The other th kind of thing is, I think a lot of Generally technical, uh, I'm trying to give you some real actionable tips. There's many different ways to do something, but um, if you draw it out after that, make a silhouette. You know, make a silhouette on a separate layer, just like what I was doing on this one. And then after that, start painting in details. Whoa. Mute your mic, everybody, or mute your YouTube. Uh, if you're on Discord. Um, yeah, so if you paint in subtly and, you know, paint in more details and more details, click on and off your, your line drawing, keep adding in details until you can eliminate your line drawing and still kind of see uh, your objective, then all of a sudden you don't need to turn on your line drawing anymore, and then you're done. It's a pretty uh, simplified answer here, but there you go. All right, and somebody was on uh, Discord. Okay, while wow, people are, I'll just leave Discord on here. Let's go to another question. Next question is from Anonymous. Is there such a thing as being too greedy in obtaining information? Love it. Uh, not in my books. Totally not. You cannot absorb, you cannot get all the information in the world. That's why art, like the pursuit of knowledge through Hello? art, is such a cool thing for me. Hey, how's it going? Hi, here's Jan. We met at uh, Dublin last year, and uh, I've got one simple question about. Uh, um, are you still there? Hi. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. I'm okay. St about uh, about uh, talking uh, to other people on the internet while working while drawing. I'm trying to start a YouTube channel. I'm having a hard time practicing that. <laughs> oh, what are you having a hard time with? Yeah, well. As soon as I uh, uh, work on my stuff and try to talk to my audience, I'm getting distracted. And I'm, of course, English is not my first language. I'm from Germany. Oh. And I'm trying to uh, search for words and um and ooh. And, uh, and then suddenly I'm Bob Ross and very, very calm and slowly. And that's not what I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and and all, all, all like this. And uh, I guess a lot of it is practicing and uh but i was wondering if you had some some tips for me well um when and i just said um look at that uh, when you're drawing and painting like right now uh yeah. i'm playing a video i'm playing okay. a video of a painting that i did already because i can't read questions if i'm painting Right. Yeah. I can't paint if I'm reading questions. Uh, that's what I did last time, and I just felt like ah, uh, it was okay, but 
I think it's nice when uh, you can keep everything nice and smooth. You could keep the talking going. You could keep the mm -hmm. uh, questions going. So, you know, you could pre-record your paintings and drawings. But if you're talking about what you're actually painting and drawing and you're making marks that coincide with what you're talking about, then yeah. I generally, it's just through practice. And as painful as it might be, listen to your old recordings again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was afraid you would say something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, I find like also something that's really helped uh, me with my teaching is that I listen to my own lessons and I try my own lessons. It's the same kind of thing, right? Like listen to your stuff. Yeah, S yeah. And then you'll kind of get it and then you'll be like, and if there are activities that you do when you're streaming, do the activities while you're listening to it to see that experience. What's that experience like as well? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So you're uh, have a nice day then. And uh, one question. Are you afraid that uh, Lightbox is going to be canceled? Of course I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it's not like I'm, I'm super afraid uh, Whatever will happen will happen. It's out of my yeah. control. Uh, but at the same time, we're over five months away. So yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff can happen. As crazy as it is then. now, right, it's still quite a long time away. And uh, Wuhan, the place where all this stuff happened, they're about to get off of quarantine. That's what I heard. That they're, yeah, they'll yeah. be done quarantine next week. So they've been in quarantine for 80 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not nearly five months. So, so yeah, I wish you fingers. all the best for it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> cross <laughs> the fingers, right? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. All right. So... If there's nobody else, we'll go on to the next question here. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, hi, Bobby. Um, hi. Uh, I, okay, I'm um, actually really nervous. This is my first time um, going on your um, I'm going here on Discord, so. Um, oh, no problem. Okay, Don't worry. Let me compose myself. <laughs> it's all good. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, regarding regarding on the topic of uh, motivation and uh, and like keeping like following a routine, like um, how do you not uh, revert like to your usual ways as to like lazing around the house and like oh I kind of don't want to do it anymore kind of like like how do you avoid like that? <laughs> uh, what are the things? that you tend to do when you're lazy when you feel like you're lazy well i think maybe because i i'm i don't really follow a certain sleeping schedule so uh -huh. um when i start to draw i would feel really tired you know like like lack of energy so i just huh, i think maybe i should just sleep and then i'll just do it later you know oh time, okay yeah, I guess maybe it's my sleeping habits that are just getting in my way. In why my Why are your life. sleeping habits so so odd? I don't know. Maybe because um, I guess I get distracted by certain stuff. Maybe I um sometimes my head is filled. I I couldn't really get to like like easily fall asleep. I don't know. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to get to what the actual problem is. And then what I would do is I would look at that problem and see how can I make it harder for this problem to be a problem. So, for example, I have an addictive nature, I think. You know, so um I used to have a pinball machine. And this oh. pinball machine was from my childhood. You know, it, it was a super nice gift that my brother bought me. Um, 
Terminator 2 pinball machine. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And it doesn't need quarters. I could play it every day. So I was playing it all the time. It was in the studio and I was still playing this thing till the point where I was like, I'm obsessed. This is not right. Uh, I'm playing this too much. So then I, you know, I have the key for the pinball machine. So I unlocked it. Uh, slid off the glass thing and put something inside my pinball machine so I couldn't play it unless I took it out. And then I put the key in a different room. So every time I wanted to you know, play the pinball machine, I'd have to go into the other room, get the key, and so on and so forth. Um, and it just made it easier to not do that thing, right? And the things that you want to do make it easier for you to do them. It's such a simple solution but it does work okay. like i have sketchbooks everywhere at home oh. everywhere at home i have them all over the place in the studio i'm never without a sketchbook right but um oh. tv remote i have a, a thing that i put my tv remotes in so i it's not out in the open right mm -hmm. things like that uh, i would really think about all your distractions and try to make them harder to do. And then your drawing time, I would schedule that. You know, if you could schedule yeah, it in. It's, it's just, I don't know, maybe there's, there's some, I just couldn't really follow a schedule properly. Like, like maybe I should trick myself into following a certain schedule. I don't know, it's just. Is it because? You know, I'm just taking a guess, but is it because okay. when you really think about it, you don't have a good enough reason to keep to a hardcore schedule? Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm still a student. <laughs> well, think about this. Uh, pain is like one of the best motivators for you to change to do the things that you don't want to do, right? Where is this going to lead you if you keep going down this path for 10 years? Think about how old you're going to be, 15 years. How old are you going to be? Where are you going to be, right? Think about that. And then what I do is I kind of almost, I try to separate myself from that vision. I try to picture it as, a beautiful piece of art and it's called lazy or something like that you know it's like it's it's a painting of you abstract painting of you or whatever and yeah it's a piece of art now and then think about okay. where you will be if you did the things that you want to do that and you want to act where are you going to be what's the big difference here mm -hmm. Okay. Does that help? I see. I hope that helps. But that's what I do. Because I, I know if I keep playing pinball or whatever, I'm going to, I would have been in the same, you know, studio or whatever, the same thing mm -hmm. I was in like, you know, six, seven years ago. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Bobby. You know, I really, I really appreciate that you try to um, interact with your fans. Um, I remember the first time I interacted with you was in Instagram. I private messaged you, um, embarrassingly, asking you to be my mentor, and I was like, oh, I don't think he'll even reply to this anyway, so I'll just send it. But to my surprise, you actually did reply. So. Um, Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. I try to with everybody. And for those of you out there that might have messaged me, I didn't reply to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just because there's. <laughs> I just try to do whatever I can. Uh, yeah. Understandable. Yeah, uh -huh. but I'm glad I, I replied to you. Thank you so much for your call. Hey, thank you, Bobby. Wonderful. Why don't we go on to another uh, question here on... Oh. Hello. 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 Hello, Bobby. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? 
Well, I'm pretty glad that you're putting together this stream for people that are mostly quarantined around the world. I know, and right? It's, oh my gosh. It's, it's very, very nice to have art as a way to connect us all and do things together. I think that's probably one of the best things to do uh, at these weird times. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had some questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's regarding YouTube. Uh, what would you recommend uh, for a young artist uh, that wants to start a YouTube channel? Like, uh, because it's a thing that I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, hi however, when I follow um, artists like you, channels like you or Proco and so on and so forth, uh, I often wonder what can I bring to the table? You know, uh, I want to have something to give to people, uh, but I don't know if it would uh, be enough. I I don't know if it's clear. No, I totally get it. Um... I would just say it's just start, you know, find yeah. some friends and start something or, you know, do it by yourself. You know, it depends on if you have, um, if you have any traffic, if you, if you want to do something live, then definitely find some friends to hang out with you. Uh, cause you might not have any, you know, many people. Yeah. Um, and, like I was telling the last person, watch your stuff. That's the best yeah. way. You know, watch your stuff as painful as it might be. Watch it and think, are you entertained? Not yes. like, is your viewer going to be entertained? Like, would you, would you be entertained? I don't know. Like, I try to, but then I think about that because... I'm almost my my own um, target audience, so I guess it depends on who you're targeting, who you hope to. Yeah, you 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 try to do what you like the most and see if it sticks with other people. Exactly. Yeah, um, I tr I definitely try to uh, entertain myself when I do something. Well, at least to have. Uh, a lot of storytelling or wonder to propose to people because I, I think it's the most important like to to have a story almost a story in each and every drawing you make um, that's why sometimes I find it difficult to just draw a character you know standing like on its own all alone and I always find the need to have a background have a scenery and something that really tells a story so yes. yeah, I try. I I try to entertain myself, and I hope that it would entertain people too. Yeah, and sometimes you can't, you know, really think of a good story. So then I start doing stuff like this. Uh, I feel the same way. A lot of times, I'm not motivated to paint anything because I don't feel like I have a good idea or I have a good story to tell. Um, but yes, that's that's definitely maybe like the most uh, discouraging things sometimes it's not about uh, what what can i draw but what can i say and sometimes you just have no idea uh i was wondering uh what's the story that that is going uh, in your head right now with uh what you are drawing i was just gonna say sometimes i don't have a good story uh, but i want to paint and draw so the best thing for that is just give yourself an assignment you know, and that's what this is. What's the story behind this? I'm starting to figure one out. You know, like her yeah. eye is her eye is red. Um, yes, yes, definitely. So I'm kind of thinking at this point. I'm kind of thinking the subject has this red hair. I'm thinking maybe mine will have flames coming out of her head. Yeah, when I saw the sketch, I I saw that, and I was wondering if like some kind of fantas fantastic, uh, mythical uh, yes. being. Yes. Yeah, you saw you saw the ending, or, uh, like, further down. <laughs> yes. But it was cool to... I loved doing this, this assignment, because the assignment was to 
do it completely without reference, right? And that became very challenging. Yes, that's definitely very challenging. I, I, I did the study last time from the last video. Yes. Uh, but I didn't do like like you the eight uh, the eight ones. But I think that would have been better because right now I just need the reference <laughs> from this uh, oh, ninety yeah. minutes exercise. Oh, yeah. And like when you think about it, it's not like you're trying to really understand and really trying to. Um, embody some linear design mm. you know this is a painting so you gotta you gotta remember you gotta understand so many things about this painting eight different paintings yeah. later i still don't feel like i got everything in this very simple photograph but uh i was able to get a lot so yeah that's that's definitely very very challenging like sometimes you you can really feel overwhelmed by the amount of information and try to uh, have a clear hierarchy in your mind of what comes first, what comes next, what is more important to translate, and what do you personally want to translate? Yeah, but and at the same time, I could tell you, I could paint this this setup, this uh, dark skin. Uh, lit from slightly underneath this yeah. profile setup, I could paint this in my sleep now. You know, so <laughs> it's yeah, it's because... a really wonderful exercise to do, especially when you repeat it over and over. That's where the real knowledge starts to absorb. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, last last time, I I I was in the chat last time, and I asked you, asked you some questions, and uh, like. This is so, so much of a good exercise because uh, these days I'm doing these color studies and then trying to face natural illustration based from the atmosphere and mood that the study had mm -hmm. from, from memory. And I feel like I'm already improving because you, you get so much better at a sense of color and stuff like that so yes iteration and using every uh, study that you make to learn ma as many things as possible it's very very good and also a good way to use your obsessive uh nature uh, <laughs> over over something worth obsessing about totally totally nowadays i'm i well until the quarantine i've been obsessed with ping pong and like pretty much addicted to ping pong so um yeah but so <laughs> that way you you are fit and you are healthy for drawing so i sports can be addictive but i guess that's a good thing lately i've been quite addicted to jump rope and that's <laughs> that's quite fun and a good way to to have your wrist uh in good shape for drawing so i guess it's not that bad yeah you no, know, definitely. Well, yeah, for me, I felt like I was way too addicted to ping pong. I was playing it way too much. So it is kind of good to have this quarantine for me to kind of get away from playing so much ping pong. But anyhow, <laughs> thank you so much for your question. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. Let's hear other questions. Wonderful. Any other people out, out there? Hi. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Where are you from? Apollo, hi. I'm British, but I moved to Canada for uni, oh. <laughs> so all over the place, really. Um, my question does actually have to do with uni. I'm in animation at the moment, but I'm wondering how you can make the most of that sort of course, because it's it's easy to sort of feel overwhelmed. Like, I made it here. It's one of the top schools in the world. What do I do now sort of thing? And it's especially with quarantine, I'm just like trying to gather tips for next year for what to, I guess, how to make the most of art school as a place. Yes. Um, if I was going to do art school all over again, how would I approach it? Maybe that would be a... Yeah. That would be able to... Okay, so first I, I would start social media because um, it it's actually become a huge tool for everybody, you know, to stay relevant, to yeah. get your name out there, all that good stuff. 
Um, I'm glad I already have that going for me then. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, the other thing I would do is I would really... Which school are you in? Sheridan. Okay. In Oakville. Right on. Um, <laughs> Sheridan gives a lot of homework. Yup. <laughs> right? There's a lot of assignments. I'm doing an assignment right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> a lot of... Let us. They've not let us breathe despite the quarantine yet. <laughs> and, you know, I have a, love, a lot of love for Sheridan because I went there. I taught there oh, as really? well. Yes. How, how have I missed this? Oh, my God. Uh, well, you were probably around. Um, no, I'm, I mean, like, how did I not know about this? I'm just. <laughs> yeah, this was like maybe nine years ago. Right. Uh, maybe more, actually. No, this is more. This is like 14 years ago, 15 years ago, wow. I was teaching at Sheridan. Um, so anyways, I also went to Sheridan. I also felt all those assignments that you really <laughs> could spend the whole entire week on just one assignment, but yep. you have like seven of them. Um, I would just think about what do I want to do? Do you know what you want to do yet? Um, I'm leaning towards VizDev a little bit. Okay. I'm enjoying so, character design in particular, and yeah, it's been... Sure, so visual development, character design in particular, um, if you already know, then I would actually spend more time on those courses. Any course that helps your character design, that's what I would do. So animation, all my animation assignments, I would do more elaborate characters and... Uh, more limited animation you know what i mean yep uh for me i want to learn how to paint and draw really well when i was in sheridan so i went to every life drawing class yeah i oh, never God, missed yeah. one but i'm saying i went to every everybody's life drawing class not just my <laughs> own <laughs> that's what I'm kind of getting at. Um, I'm doing my best with that. But I another thing, another issue that I'm facing is I work about 16 hours a week to be able to afford to be here. Uh, and yes. I miss out on extra life. And it kind of sucks because I'm just sat there at work and like people are doing all these extra life things because it's every day. Well, not anymore, but like during normal hours. So I try to do them. I try to do studies in the morning from like YouTube, I guess, uh -huh. which it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of, it's not a replacement by any means, but it's kind of, I well, guess I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping I'm on the right track is what I'm saying. Well, yeah. And, and like one of the reasons I'm doing this stream today is to give people such as yourself an exercise that they can do in the morning. You know, yeah. this is 90 minutes. You can try to spend 60 minutes if you want. Um, I was doing these studies, you know, 40 to to 60 minutes long. Um, so these are things that you can do, right? Uh, yep. It's just life's test trying to see how badly do you want it, you know? Like, <laughs> you got to work those 16 hours and stuff, um, which is no joke. But at the same time, we have to realize we don't need life drawing to do life drawing. Life drawing. Life. It's all yeah. around, <laughs> you know, uh, the best. A bunch of us actually started to do cafe sketching, inverted commas, where we just sit in the learning commons and yeah. we just draw people for a bit, which kind of sounds creepy, but it's weird how many people like for the first time in a, I'm in an environment that where other people want this as much as I want this. And it's really refreshing to see, like, it's great. I actually, I see you, uh, old student from one of my very first uh, digital painting classes at Sheridan. Wow. Devere, right on. What's up? Um, <laughs> anyways, I digress. So, yeah, the, the way that I learned how to draw people was from subway sketching. Right. The most influence that I've had on my on my drawing of people were totally from subway sketching. You know, so you don't necessarily need to get into life drawing every day. There's also tons of stuff to be learned from studying from photographs. Even though photographs, 
uh, the camera has already dictated the exposure, the contrast, a bunch of stuff. But as well, um, a photograph just lets you take your time to analyze a slice of life. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> right? I like that analysis of it. If you, you if you do the same thing as what I was describing in the very beginning, um, I'll put it on screen as well. It's just studying the same subject over and over and over in different ways mm -hmm. and doing it in such a way where it's going to help your overall objective. My overall objective was to be able to paint this out of my head. Right. So as I'm studying, I'm trying to take off those training wheels uh, slowly by not looking at the photograph a lot of times, trying to guess and then look back at the photograph and go, OK, was I right? Was I wrong? Why was this there? Why was I wrong here? Why was I right here? You know, and yeah. Does that make sense? Before yeah, you know no, it, it totally does. And also, if you're only life drawing. You won't be able to character design. Yeah. You have to study <laughs> character designers. You have to study as many different character designers as possible. And then your own style will emerge and it'll be rooted. It'll be rooted on a, a very solid foundation of mm -hmm. knowledge that you've absorbed from all those other character designers that you studied. Yeah. No, one amazing thing about being at Sheridan is because I've got a fairly big Instagram it's 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 kind of a lot of pressure to be like oh people want to see this thing this is my style and to let go of that has actually been really liberating I'm like no I can I can draw things in different ways and like I can actually learn and it's been kind of nice letting go of that absolutely absolutely like people want to see me draw creatures all day you know, I'm drawing a person. Right. Yeah. Some sometimes you gotta let go. It's good to branch out. Yeah. Thank I'm, you I'm so much. I'm glad that you aren't being a slave to the uh, social media monster. That's really. Good I'm to trying hear. not to be. I'm trying not to be. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your call. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to hear all the other questions that we have. Thank you. Excellent. Bye. Bye. All right. So. so just before we go on any further, it's already an hour has passed. We have half an hour left in this challenge. So you want to think about how far you got in your illustration and think about what you want to accomplish in the next half an hour to finish it up. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Hello. Uh, I, I don't know how to uh, you spell my name, but I think Henry. It's my second name. My okay. first name, I don't know. I'm from Brazil. Oh, hi, Harry. Uh, uh, Henry. Sorry. Henry, Henry. My, my English is, is awful, very bad. So, uh, Bobby, I, I, I have uh, some questions for you. Uh, the first thing, uh, I am a self-taught artist, and uh, I'm working on uh, a concept uh, portfolio for video game and film movie industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, uh, I, I just took some notes here. Uh, let me read. Uh, I love uh, drawing environments and uh, another designs, but I really need, uh, I really need a job on the, uh, as a concept designer, but I, I heard from many artists that um, if you do things to get attention, like uh, get attention from an art director is very bad for you, your work. And I, I, I want to hear from you if like doing, doing things for a specific company uh, uh, in a style for a specific company would be a, a good idea. You mean like creating a portfolio or, or artwork specifically for a specific company? Yes, yes. That's it. I think that's a great idea. I, I mm. did that all the time. Like nowadays, I don't 
really have to show my portfolio very much. But when mm -hmm. I did have to show it a lot, um, I would have different portfolios. You know, so okay. y you are DreamWorks. I'll show you a different portfolio than Universal Studios. You know, if it's some live right. action thing, then I'll show you a different portfolio. If it's uh, whatever it might be, I I'll pick out the things that I want to show you. So uh, making artwork to get a specific job, to get to a specific goal, that's a great idea. And it's not hurting your your artwork at all, like? No. No, no, but, uh, you know, like, um, it it depends if your goals align with what you're doing. That's all. If you're, if you want to be an art director, but you keep doing these styles that are already established that are not your own style, then maybe you'll have a harder time. But if you have your, if you want to be an art director, if you want to be a character designer or something, you want to have your own voice, perhaps? Yes. As, uh, and as a concept designer, you are not go only going to do environments or... You might. Uh, if, it's you a might big, oh. if it's a big project, you know, if it's a... The bigger the company, the, the more specialized you are, generally. The smaller oh. the company, the more everything they'll ask you to do i got it because uh, i saw a video of feng zhu you know him mm -hmm. i don't know uh, him but i know of him yes 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 he said that as a concept artist you are not going uh, you are not only going to do like uh, a specific like vehicles or environment or character you you're going to do everything, but you you answered that question, so yeah, you the company. And my 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 answer is really it's not a straightforward answer. It really depends on the company, um, mm -hmm. and like Feng Zhu, his answer might totally be correct with his experience. Okay, right. So. Um, mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I've been working in film for 15 years now. And generally, people call me up to work on characters specifically, and that's it. And not just that, it's almost always some sort of creature kind of character. It's very yeah. specific. OK. So not to say that he's wrong. I'm just saying there's many different answers. There's many different situations. And for his situation, it might totally be absolutely correct. Okay, there are different cases. Yes. Just like around. if you are, you know, some people say if you're a character designer, that means that you need to know how to do all sorts of different styles. Which, yeah, for a lot of times, that's very, very true. But are there cases where uh, there's artists that just do that one style and have done amazing character designs? You know, somebody that comes to mind is somebody like uh, Mike Mignola. Oh. He, you know, he's so good. He has a very specific style. I believe he also worked on Pan's Labyrinth, if I'm not mistaken. Not just the Hellboy movies. You know, I like, yeah. So there you go. I hope okay, that helps. Nice. Uh, have you time for one quick question? Okay, sure. Just one more. Uh, being uh, a self-taught artist, uh, it's hard for me to keep the. I know that homework is the best uh, practice method, but I don't have the motivation. Can you do like? Should I maybe? Like, I can only, I don't know, eat lunch once I finish my homework. That, that's a good motivation. I don't know. Uh, yeah, motivation, you know. 
I see. I'm motivated. I'm actually I'm not motivated all the time, but I will do the things that I feel motivated people would do. You know, um, I remember when I remember when I was actually I, I think I was in Brazil at the time. I think I was in Floripa, and the water was so cold because it's super south. And I didn't want to go in the water, but I wanted to go in the water. You know what I mean? So I just shut my brain off and just did that decision. It's literally like the same thing for me when it comes to art. You, you know, you think of that idea. Oh, yeah. You know what would be great right now is to do some drawing. Shut off the rest of your brain after that and just go and do some drawing. Okay. If it's tough, then just tell yourself, you know what? Five minutes. That's all I need to do. And if you do more than five minutes, then that's great. If you only do five minutes, that's fine too. Because you made that decision and then you did it. Nice. You just need to suck it up and, and do it. Like... Yeah, you need to get that voice in your head and you gotta like smack it down, you know? <laughs> And go, shut up. I got stuff to do. I got I to gotta do these paintings. I got to do these drawings. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Go sit in that corner and don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Bobby. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Take care. Take care. All right. Man, I miss Brazil. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Where are you from? What's your name? I am uh, Roy. I'm from the Netherlands. Awesome. Such an awesome group yeah. of people that have collected in this one stream. All around the world. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, I had a question about focus. Um, so when I'm painting, I'm like in the middle of a process and my mind just drifts off. Like it goes uh, to things from the past, things from the future. You know, it's, it starts to worry about things. Are there any like um, things, tips that you have about that, just to keep your focus on the work in front of you? I know. Might be a bit more of a philosophical uh, thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially nowadays, uh, mm. we have so many things to think about, to be concerned about. Um, if you think about all the things that your mind tends to drift to, how many of these things are not in your control? In other words, um, well, okay, like, yeah. probably mostly all of them. <laughs> oh, wow. See, uh, somebody was saying that that question about Lightbox. What if the coronavirus is still around during Lightbox? What's going to happen? Well, we wouldn't do Lightbox if it's going to endanger the art community. That's for damn sure. Um, but am I worried about it? No, I'm not worried about it because it's out of my control. I'm going to do the things that I can do, uh, mm -hmm. in case light box can happen, you know? Uh, and then that's it. Anything out of my control, I don't think about it. And okay, you should, you really shouldn't either. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you're spending effort and time on something that is not movable by you. Okay. So, but you don't have, like when you're painting your creatures and you're like rendering them out that your mind just drifts away? You don't have that? It, it will, like yeah, it'll focus. drift away. But the thing is, it'll only drift towards things that I can actually um, affect. That's okay. just kind of like an overall principle I've had for a long time now and it, was, it came about because I was really stressed at a point right I oh, was I, yeah. I yeah I've actually heard that before that is kind of like a stoic thought I don't know if you know about stoicism oh yeah for sure yeah I, I really appreciate like, stoicism yeah, don't, don't worry about the things that you 
to not control, only worry about the things in front of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so prime example yeah, is like... Do you not have like any um, rituals or just do you exercise to keep more focused or, or yeah. any things that you do to enhance your focus? Uh, I do this one thing regularly. It's called the Wim Hof method. Do you know Wim Hof? He's like the the ice man. No, I don't. I think he lives in the Netherlands. But wow. anyways, he has this. And you could look him up. It's just W I M and then F mm -hmm. or H O F. Uh, and he has these breathing exercises, and it's really really good for so many things. It lowers your uh, Acidity, okay. it it, it uh, helps clear your mind. It, it helps in so many different ways. I do that. I try to do that every day. So I om I do that almost every day, and it's amazing. Um, and I exercise. You're right. Sometimes when I have too much on my mind, I can't get it off. I just exercise like crazy until I'm just so tired. <laughs> and then you feel good after. Yeah, yeah. Exercise, of course, nice to just clear your head and just think about nothing for a moment. Only the pain in your body. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay thanks thank so much for your question. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Bye. And for those of you that are still painting and drawing, you can see that I finished this painting a little bit quicker. Um, I'm going to give everybody still up to that 90 minute mark so you have about 14 minutes left to finish your illustration you can see that this illustration you can totally the people that have the reference in front of them i'll put it up here you can totally see what was inspired what was taken away from this reference and applied to this image i was saying that i really appreciated um, the lighting on the face it's different than what I would normally, what is typically done with lighting coming from up above downwards, right? The upper eyelid area, that's actually in light instead of shadow. You have a bit of shadow on the top of the nose, on top of the upper lip. Um, I, felt, I felt like the combination the really cool, fun combination of a very desaturated brown with a desaturated blue for lighting really made it a really cool effect on the overall face, I thought. Uh, it's, that was something I, uh, that I learned from this illustration as well. I think I learned it right here in this one. In this one, I started to kind of, you see how ugly these are? And it doesn't really matter either because they are just studies. I'm trying to get after information, right? Um, and in the final one, I'm trying to make it a cool illustration, pleasant to look at and everything. Uh, yeah, so why don't we go on to another question. Um, but yeah, just to, just to reinforce what I've been talking about, I took this illustration, painted it with the silhouette, uh, mapped out for me, traced, so I don't have to do as much drawing. Then I painted it again, but I had to draw it freehand and look at that. That looks like garbage. Then I drew it again, thinking about some more objectives. I was thinking... I want to apply a bit more design into the different proportions. Again, exploring. This is garbage to me. This is like a one-hour warm-up kind of thing. And that was the purpose. It was done really quickly. I could still get on with my day. Then I did a mirror image of the same, assign the same reference image uh, tracing the silhouette. So I had a silhouette to work from. Then I did the mirror image but I had to draw it and I had to do it in color. And that's when I was like, wow, these colors are gross. They don't work at all. And I started to think, what am I gonna do tomorrow? I did this one the next day thinking about, okay, what is that creative version gonna be? And it ended up being this. 
And this was done without looking at the reference at all, not even once. It's, but it, you know, I painted, I studied the photograph eight times. A lot of times, like I was saying, we tend to do our lunchtime studies and then we're like, we're done. <laughs> I learned. Uh, but how much did you learn from that study? You might have learned some stuff, absolutely. But how much did you learn from the overall piles of information that you could have learned? Right? Study it again. Study it again. Study it again. I, I guarantee you I learned a ton of things from this one photograph study that I wouldn't have learned if I only studied it once. All right, so why don't we go on to one more, a couple more questions here. Anonymous asks, hi, Bobby, really love your positive vibes. Nice. Just curious, what was the best quest in your art journey which changes your art career? There's actually been a bunch. You know, schoolism in general has done so much because uh, being able, you know, we got to think schoolism has been around for about 15 years. 15 years. That was before Facebook. Back then to play a video was actually kind of difficult uh, on the internet. YouTube was one years old maybe, maybe not even. Um, so when schoolism came out, it really changed a lot of lives. It really changed so many lives around the world, uh, opened the doors to vast amounts of knowledge that uh, all these people from places that never had access could all of a sudden have access. So that was definitely one of the best quests in my art journey that's changed my art career and lives, not just my life, but like so many lives out there um, and continues to change lives. Because also, I created schoolism for everybody, but also for me, because I'm also everybody, you know, I'm part of the everybody. So it's always been this very honest quest of trying to collect the best knowledge in the world from the best artists in the world. Uh, and as you can see on the bottom of the screen, if you go to schoolism.com, you can access all 30 plus schoolism courses for like 30 bucks a month. And right now is a really great time to level up because there's going to be all these people that are going to come out of the woodwork, out of quarantine later on, that have just binge watched every show out there Love is Blind, Circle, or <laughs> uh, Tiger King, or whatever those trendy shows are. And then there's going to be people like you that have done studies with me, that have continued things on, that have progressed while everybody else was binge-watching shows and playing video games. You and I have been improving ourselves, improving our skills, and making everything uh, so much better for the future for us, right? And, and that is going to become a very obvious gap between these two groups, the ones that really use the best, uh, made the best uses of their time, and the people that tried to wait out this virus. You know, let's not wait it out. Let's put that effort in there uh, and you know come out glowing because one quote I remember I don't remember the full quote but I remember it being something like this uh, in chaos there's opportunity in the worst times a lot of times there is the best opportunities uh, so many of the most amazing companies or inventions or people came out of very negative situations. It's not to say, yay, negative situations are here. We have a chance to 
you know, do something amazing. But it's more like I understand the situation. It's not a good situation. But there's a silver lining here. And let's just let's make the best out of this situation. And that's what I'm doing with this. That's what I plan on doing with you guys. I plan on doing uh, these streams with you at least once a week. Uh, where we can all paint together. I'll give you an exercise. We could do it together. And then hashtag it. You could hashtag this one, 90 minute art challenge. Okay, 90 minute art challenge. And then we could see everybody else's art challenge as well. Um, it should be fun. I hope. Uh, as long as everybody keeps up and uh, likes it and does it. So there we go. We got five more minutes. I'll try to answer a couple more questions. OK, so next question is anonymous. I feel like, or sometimes I feel like the more I learn about the basics and fundamentals, the less interesting my art becomes. Do you have any solutions for my situation, Bobby? Uh, First, a statement. Some of the best artists in the world find the most boring stuff absolutely fascinating. So one thing is learn to love boring, quote unquote, boring things. The basics, the fundamentals. When you're painting a light bulb underneath your controlled lighting situation, Maybe you could look at that light bulb and go, how would I take, how would I extrapolate information, knowledge from this study and apply it to my futuristic uh, cityscape that's under a dome? You get it? The glass and everything, right? Uh, you can think about things like, pretty much how to apply the basics and the fundamentals to the more interesting ideas that you have. And at the same time, try to really learn to love these quote unquote bro boring things. You know, and this is kind of the perfect, uh, the perfect subject, the perfect video for me to talk about this stuff because I literally did it, right? The very first uh, copy of this photograph I did it with you guys last week right and then after that I did it again and again and again and again and again and again the same one I'm a professional artist you know a lot of people might feel like I don't need to do that and maybe I don't need to do that but perhaps it's because I do these things that have brought me to a professional level and continues to up my game, continues to evolve my art because of things like this. And what an awesome kind of opportunity that is as well because so many people would find this stuff boring. And if you don't, if you can progress through, then all of a sudden you became the small percentage of people you know, the small elite percentage of artists that have all the right ingredients, whether you're there already, you have all the right ingredients to get yourself to that level that you want to, that you strive for, right? And if you did this assignment with me as well, if you did this assignment with me, good for you because you are also one of that you know, one of those like 1% of artists out there that are not binge watching whatever on Netflix, that's not wasting time, that isn't just kind of waiting there and isn't just doing art as a job, right? You have passion. You have passion for learning. You have that goal to get better. And that's what's going to bring you to that 0.1% or 0.01% of all artists. 
keep that drawing going, keep that learning going, no matter what level you're at, keep it going. Because that's, that's what's going to keep you sharp. You know, a lot of people, they might do extremely well. But look around in your studios. Look around where you work. How many people are over 50? How many people are over 55? How many people are over 60 in your studio? Why are they still there? They don't draw... They most likely, they don't draw like 30 years ago. They keep evolving. They keep learning. Right? Even if you got to a certain level, perhaps you only got to a certain level in, in the wrong building. You know, and that building is like 30 years old now. Nobody really wants to hang out in that building drawing the way that you draw anymore. Right? We want to keep evolving, keep growing, keep expanding, uh, and keep learning. Okay, so there you go, everybody. Hope you liked the challenge, the 90-minute challenge. Remember to hashtag and upload your art, 90-minute art challenge. And I'll see you next week for another art challenge. So be ready. Schedule it in. I'll make a live stream thing set up for next week, and I'll see you guys there. All right, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay home, and I'll see you guys next week.